everybody. Shout out to all the guests that's up in here, man. It's your boy, Nee16. I'm on all platforms. Make sure you check me out. I love y'all. Let's have a good show, y'all. My brother, man. Nobody does it better. Word of Nate, dog. R.I.P. I'm a warrior. I'm going to win. But now that's what the mustache really looked like. If y'all remember Mario Kart. <laughs> I had different voices for all those, but I can't really do it right now. All right, so pulled up tonight, didn't forget about the boy. Um, yeah, yo, Nico's one of one, man. I, I've met a lot of professionals, a lot of, you know, entertainers. And um, man, I can't speak highly enough. Stay tuned for the after hours and you can hear some of his original tracks and some more uncensored freestyles. That being said, um, KO, if you ready, go ahead and request the box. I, I didn't get really get a chance to organize who's going when and i haven't seen any either of our other guests in the chat yet here we go ladies and gentlemen please give a warm welcome to a good friend of mine and the first guest of this evening's featured show ko <laughs> what's good how you feeling so nervous <laughs> don't be nervous you belong here <laughs> I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, the pleasure's all over here. Thanks for coming on such short notice. You're the real MVP. Of course, always, always, always pull through. Um, so uh, so let, let's jump right on into things. Um, if you have the first item you wanted to share, let's dive right on into it. So the first item is something that never leaves my neck. And it's um, my mom, my gold heart. And on the back, it has the date. I thought to look around. You see, you see it has the date on the back. Um, my father actually uh, got it for me after I lost my mother. Um, so this actually means the most to me, and I have never taken it off since I got it. So it's literally been around my neck for five years. That's beautiful. I love that. And anybody who knows Ko, you know, whenever you go to Ko's stream, she's always smiling and positive <laughs> and like just spreading good vibes. So like. This is a big reason why I do this show because a lot of the time people don't realize, um, not only like just to get to know more about you, but to realize like everyone really has a soft spot, even if they don't want you to know about it. So when you're able to... <laughs> Yo, that's dang, I've never seen that. They got the dragon exhibit. Yeah, yeah. it's the new... Um, that was lit. Shout out to Jen Kagan. Yeah. I'm not supposed to do that, but that new, that new <laughs> the, the sound too. <laughs> um, but, but when you get to um, see a different side of someone, see the vulnerable side, because everyone has that, you know, what I mean, everybody, whether they want to act like, you know, what I mean, they never need help. Everybody needs help at some point. Everybody yeah. needs a shoulder to lean on, period. So um, that's beautiful of you to open up, show us. And the fact that you've never yeah. taken it off your neck, that's something I would do. I, I've done that with like random things. Like I went to a concert, um, a show, like a DJ Tiesto show in France with a bunch of my friends in 2008. And I literally had this little wristband on until like 2013. I was playing pickup ball and it ripped <laughs> off. It was on for like oh, five shit. years though. Like why? I don't Damn. know. But, but that's actually some like real something that, you know, like like what I tell people is like a tattoo you can never regret is getting like your mother's name tattooed or your son or daughter, um, yeah. a parent or a kid. Um, that's something you can never, you know, um, never regret. So that's beautiful. I love that. And that's a perfect first item. But let, let's dive into yeah. the next one. And yo, shout out I, I to gotta get the, the second one's on my wall. And of course, I'm not going to hold you. It's another thing that has to do with my mother. Because she was my rock and she was my world. And that's really the only female I ever cared about in my life, respectfully. Um, so this was actually a gift from one of my best friends. Uh, it was a birthday present. And the reason why I take this to heart is because she had it custom made. And the lettering on it is actually the same tattoo I got on the side of my rib cage for my mom. Wow, the same font. Yeah, so that's my mommy. And then I know the ring light's reflecting off of it, but the saying it says, uh, a big piece of my heart lives in heaven and she's my mom. I actually have that tatted on the side of my rib cage, and the mom is done in purple. Facts, absolutely beautiful. And I'm not going to lie, I see where you got your face from now. Pull, pull that face, pull, pull it back up. Y'all have the same face. For real, don't they look in the smile even? It's like the spinning image, for real. She's a little darker, yeah, though. Yeah, she's a, 
But it's crazy because uh, both my parents are Irish, so I am actually a full blooded leprechaun. Oh, wow. I would never have known that. For some reason, <laughs> yeah. I felt like, I mean, I've got some different ethnicities blended in. I kind of felt like you might have been like Hispanic Spanish? or something. Or like, yeah. Everybody, like I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody <laughs> thinks that I'm not going to hold you. Um, my other gift that I have, uh, it's my most recent gift that I got, but it means a lot to me because it was the second person that I have ever met off the app. And she actually has the other half of it. So, <laughs> oh, it's one of those. Those are the best. It's an avocado. So, I had <laughs> went to Texas for my birthday weekend and I met up with somebody that I've rocked with for a while. Um, pretty much an A1 day one. Um, a lot of y'all might know her, some of y'all don't, but Sweet Delicious. Oh, yeah, for sure. I got mad. Sweet Delicious has my other half of my avocado. <laughs> 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 that is my heart. That is my baby. And yeah, those are probably the most three sentimental, valuable things that I have right now in my life. Wow. I hope, man, I wish, mo- I wish someone was here so we could show that because I know Sweet would be honored. She's probably working. She's living that nurse life. Yeah, she is. Her. Overnight, yeah. She's um, only off uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, sometimes Thursday. But yeah, I know her work schedule like black work, <laughs> respectfully. <laughs> respectfully, yeah. that's one of my A1 day ones. Yeah, yeah, she's great people and that's beautiful. Honestly, um... And yeah, avocado is nature's butter. If anyone doesn't rock with avocado, <laughs> y'all must have something yeah. wrong with your taste, but I don't know. <laughs> it goes good. And it that smacks part, with bacon. Part. If you have something with bacon on it, yes. and then you add the avocado. They make it identical. Like avocado toast. <laughs> yeah, avocado toast, you know what I mean? Yep. I'll with rock with it. bacon bits on it? Yeah. Um, I think I started rocking with it more as I got older. <laughs> Jay, I'm not... <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I feel like in and out they should have they should have bacon and avocado among request or upon request. Like really all burger places should have those things just like on deck. Yeah. Um, but um yeah. I think most of them well most of them do out here. They have it as an option to add. Wait, in and out? In and out does not got bacon or avocado, I don't think. <laughs> You're about to change my world if they do. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm the dead. secret Rain. menu. Hey, th- let me tell y'all some in and out hacks right now. Hack number one, don't ever pay for animal fries because you can get spread <laughs> you can get spread for free. Or what you do is you tell them, I want my fries with spread and grilled onions, and you'll get it for free. I think they charge like three extra dollars or something for animal. You could just tell them oh, put shit. spread and grilled onions and they'll do it. Um oh, wow. Man, there's other hacks. I'm not, I'm not thinking about it. Um, I can't think right now, but that's definitely a good one. Um, <laughs> and also, if you don't like their fries, people are like, oh, their fries, they're too crisp, crispy, crunchy. Just tell them to do their fries light and they'll make them softer for you. But either way, nobody goes to In-N-Out for the fries. Their fries are like bottom of the bottom of the barrel. Food, <laughs> and then the burgers are close to the top. Speaking of which, do you have a favorite fast food restaurant? Let's segue into some questions. Now that we're talking fast food and everyone in the chat, feel free to put your favorite fast food too. Fast food restaurant, I think if it really came down to it, there's only two that I, I, I fuck with off top. And I guess it also just depends on where you at. So Wendy's, I ain't gonna hold you. But I only eat chicken, I don't do burgers unless I actually make the burger myself. So I don't do burgers anywhere I go unless I cook it. Um, WTF, what the fuck? Oh, I can't curse. You good. No, you good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I make slip ups on my own show sometimes. Everyone's human. Um uh and then the other one is I'm not gonna hold you. And they're so against the LGBTQ community, but I love you some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, you know what I mean? Sometimes you gotta break your bottom line for that, you yeah. know what I mean, for the flavor. But at the end yeah. of the day, it's like you go in there and having one. You know, I mean, crispy yeah. chicken sandwich or whatever you're going to get, like, that's not going to affect the movement, really. You know what I mean? It's... But now, if you're talking like a restaurant, I'm diehard seafood. And the best so, seafood I've had was a restaurant down in the Kings. So what did you have there? Favorite seafood? Everyone in the chat, if you like seafood, put it for me. It's ceviche. That's my I favorite. eat it, but I eat it all. Like, I, there's not one seafood that I don't oh, think man. I've eaten that I didn't like. So between scallops, um my, Whoa, my did somebody say lobster. i eat it all not bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ko eats it all hello <laughs> the whole enchilada that part <laughs> let's go cat boom baby hello 
Uh, so the, do you have, do you, do you have, <laughs> uh, hold on, let me just gather myself. All right, hold on. Yeah, sorry, do sorry, you have a good. favorite um, childhood toy? You're going to laugh at me if I told you what it was. Nah, come on. That's what this is all about. My favorite childhood toy, honest to God, was the Skip It. <laughs> skip It. Oh, the... the Do y'all remember it? <laughs> I, 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 bop It? Skip no, It. No, Skip It. So it would go around your ankle, and then you would sling it around, and you would... <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. And it's like, it's almost like a handcuff. Like a, it's almost like a home um, house arrest device that goes on your ankle, but it like, it flips around and you, you, you jump the other foot and you skip. Yeah. yeah that's counts, good exercise. Counts, I'll get that yeah, for my it counts, kid. But yeah, it counts all the time. You skip it. Yeah, that's a good ex that's good exercise. Like like if you're yeah. if you're a parent and like you got a lazy kid who's trying to game, get him that. Who remembers that game, Dance Dance Revolution? That game, you could, you could jump on the little yeah. skirt. They had it in arcades. Yeah. My friends had that game at their house, and we would play it. I'd be up with them at like two in the morning. We're thirteen years old. Like we're supposed to be some like alpha kid, you know what I mean? Sports. <laughs> we all play foot tackle football, but, but we're playing Dance Dance Revolution at two in the morning. <laughs> da, da, right, left. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm nice. I was the nicest one. I got footwork from basketball. I pivot, pivot, uh, step back. I mean, my footwork is pretty good, but I think my hand, my hand works a little bit better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> all right, all right. So wait, so, so yeah, um, but yeah, I had to get an agility ladder because I coach kids. So like, I, I put kids through this agility. I actually have it right here, but I'm not gonna whip it out whoa did somebody say whip it out my bad i'm not gonna but it's like one of those ladders you put on the ground and like there's different patterns to do it so like my footwork was really good as like uh, going through my you know my teens or whatever and then like when i got this in my late 20s i didn't realize how much it had fallen off but then training the kids like especially new ones i had to show them how to do the exercises on the agility ladder and that got my footwork back on point to where i'm like oh it's like it had me just dancing i was walking through my house just like <laughs> getting and like doing a little you know um but i haven't done it the whole pandemic so i got to get back on my agility if y'all are looking for a way to get in shape get an agility ladder i'll show y'all how to do it if you don't yeah know. you don't have to show me how to do it because i have no clue I got you. <laughs> i'm gonna get one <laughs> all right so I'm, I'm gonna keep asking questions this interview isn't over yeah, I but i want to tell y'all this if you can't already tell ko is a complete vibe someone who always 100 percent of the time will lift me up when i go by a stream and just someone in the community who's valued by everyone who knows so hit that favorite up top tell her you found her here good people 100 percent um bro you fucking amazing bro i appreciate you so much thank you for yo it was an honor being on your show bro like i much love you i love your fucking face i'm not done home, with bro. you yet though don't say oh. your goodbyes yet we ain't done yet hold on oh, okay. we're gonna do yet. a couple more <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> All right, so let's do something funny because you, I feel like you're very, um, you're very unapologetic when it comes to like, I don't feel like you're too shy to really, you know, like, nope. you're, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so no. this is a question I like to ask everybody, and, and probably this is probably going to be the one we're going to end up on so I don't fall too far behind schedule. Okay. What would you say your most embarrassing moment is? You, you couldn't laugh at it at that time. You would rather be anywhere else in the world. But now you can look back at it and laugh and be like, man, that was kind of funny. Like, So I'm not going to lie. So obviously, I've always dressed like a boy from the moment I was able to dress myself. Um, and my, at the time, like my brother kind of was like kind of raised me pretty much. So um he decided to pull my pants down in front of all his friends because he knew I had boxers on, <laughs> respectfully. <laughs> but <laughs> I was young. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, I got pants in front of all his friends. <laughs> so now it's hysterical, but back then I was like, I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> but yeah, that I'm was probably my most embarrassing. I'm not going to lie, I have my friend. <laughs> I had my friend like he wasn't really like a good friend but he was new to my school and we were in pe and he got pants like shorts and boxers in front of the whole class and i and he just stood there and froze and i ran up and i pulled his up for him like he thanked me later but like i pulled it up for him i was like yo like 
he just froze at it within his ankles. It was like I was like, man, like it and when you're in it seventh grade, I don't care who you are. If you're in sixth, seventh grade, like you ain't ready to be <laughs> in See, the. I'm not gonna you know lie, it wasn't I mean? that not bad. A it wasn't that bad because it was my brother, one of his guy friends that he looked at like a brother who I also knew, considered a second brother, and then it was four females. So it was kind of embarrassing, but not that embarrassing mm -hmm. because I did love a lot of girls that wasn't what I was like. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but that, that would probably be the most embarrassing moment I've had. All right, all right, I love it. All right, well, everybody, <laughs> one more time, everyone who just tapped in, hit that favorite on KO. Y amazing smile, Much amazing fun. person, amazing heart. <laughs> Thank and, you. you know, I mean, we're, we're still, um, you know what I mean? We still got a lot of show left, but I really enjoy this and uh, we'll be tapping I did soon. too. <laughs> I told you it'd be effortless. You're a natural. Much, like, bro. Much love. It was not me that pulled him down, Chish. I swear it wasn't. All right, all right. Hey, that hey, one day, one day you're gonna hear me on TV. I'm actually a voice actor, so um that's that's the goal, and it's 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 productive right now. We're making some progress. Um, all right, that being said, if either of our next two guests is ready, feel free to request the box at this point. Well, request it first is up next. All right, this next guest right here was referred to me by my friend Jay. He was just on Role Model Show, so I don't know if he's, I think it should be over now, maybe he's here. But anyway, give a warm welcome. She's a new friend of mine, so I'm about to be learning, excuse me about her, just like y'all are. Give a warm welcome to Susie Bella. Lonnie, you bad in cleanup. And, and, and Mike fam, you can come up for after hours open mic. What's up, Susie? Hi. How are you feeling? I should have done this I'm before. Feeling, I'm feeling good. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yo, so I feel like KO was sitting closer to the camera, and then I'm looking at it, and I usually put people medium, and I didn't even realize to do that, so I'm going to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> medium box, but okay. <laughs> All right, so um, what you call it? Um, so I don't know if you were able, because we didn't speak personally before this. Usually I would like give, you know, so I don't know if you were able to speak to Jay and prepare any items. If you I weren't, did. don't worry. You did. Okay. Great. I did. That's, I, I worked with this with KO. So we, we planned this together. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And everyone who's requesting the box, uh, let me just get, make a quick, you know, um, public service announcement this is a featured show so i can't cam you guys up but after hours i will have open mic everyone will be welcome and if i'm not acknowledging chat i get this every single week i came to your feet i came uh, i was in your stream and you didn't respond to my comments i cannot respond to the comments during a featured show so if you don't know the drill now you do i'm not dissing you but i'm look friends of mine that they come every single day um are in here and saying hi to me i'm not acknowledging them but i love all you guys so just know that it's nothing personal i'm not trying to big time y'all i'm nobody i don't care clout on this app is nothing this app is you know what i mean like there's not like i like everybody equal so don't take it personal it happens every week i can't say it enough but let's segue back into this i've seen my boy nico shooting a shot make sure you favor him one of the most talented people on any of these streaming platforms period um, and let's get into it. So let, let's, let's, first of all, I, I really don't know you. So uh, if you want to just like introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about um, when you started streaming and maybe like when we can find you streaming and then we can dive into the first item. All right. Well, my name is Susie Bayer. Um, I've been streaming for about a year and a half and I took about a six month break, but I came back strong. Um, recently got my badge, like, I don't know, I want to say like a little over a month ago now. And now we're here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. I usually so, stream. I'm sorry. I forgot that part. Um, usually Monday, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern. Wow. You got a very specific time. That's, that's great to have as a streamer. And no, you weren't, it wasn't that you had, for, uh, you did, I mean, technically forget that, but I, my face was because I just spilled something everywhere. So it's not, it's not you. It's just me being a, um a rookie host right now this, this whole stream i've been messing up so if y'all been here since the beginning like um <laughs> but i'm not tripping I, this isn't my first barbecue so i don't really get nervous for these shows anymore um i've been doing it over a year now 
Kobe. Oh, I made that in two rooms away. I swear <laughs> to God, nothing but it felt good. Okay. Um, that, two but... rooms away. It's like at least uh, 12 feet away. <clears throat> I swear to God. Okay. Do we do this? Put a one in the chat if you want to see the proof. It was a napkin. Oh. Put a one if you want to see the proof. We'll do it. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> if I see enough ones, okay. All right, we going in there. I'm there. Someone's, the hater's going to be like, oh, that could have just been an old napkin in there. <laughs> All right, look. Boom. I swear to God, I couldn't make that up. <laughs> it was, it felt, it felt sweet. I had the follow through. When you follow through, you, you make the shot. Period. I right, did that. <laughs> no regrets. All right. So now that I'm done showboating, let's go ahead and dive into the first item. Okay. So. Um, for those that know me, those know that I used to be in the Air Force. I was in for seven years. And one of the first items that you usually get after you graduate uh, Air Force basic training is a challenge coin. So I have my challenge coin right here. You can only earn it after you graduate at gradu on graduation day. So this means a lot to me because I put in the work to get it and I've still had it ever since. So I've been out for about a year now and I miss it every single day. So. That's dope. Yeah, facts. And shout out to everyone. Shout out to Susie and shout out to anyone who served. Um, at the end of the day, you know, um, just anybody who's done something that stepped outside of their self and done something for anybody, let alone the country that deserves, you know. <sighs> yeah. And then, by the way, quick shout out to my guy, Chish and Phipps. Um, he's actually, so I started this collective MSL Music Saves Lives and Chish is the lead ambassador he's actually coming out of uh australia so he can help anyone get that font in their name if they want it and he also has a new featured show it's not that new now it's been a few months but it's every tuesday um technically for me it's monday at 10 p.m but for if you're on the east coast it's tuesday at 1 a.m right when the night starts so make sure y'all favorite him one of the best vibes one of the most talented people i've ever met um whether it comes to, you know, different types of instruments or fire dancing. He's the only, ah, I'm a warrior. No, I can't do that out on my bed. Let me chill. Um, <laughs> so he can, the man can fire dance. So just put it at that. We're going <laughs> to, you had a feeling it was going to spin that one. All right. So look, this interview is about Susie and I've strayed from it enough. So let's dive into the next item. And by the way, I need everyone to favor her. All right. Who's chilling here. So my next item is this uh, piece of paper here. It was like my first card that I got from my babies after I was born. Not I was born. They were born. Lord have mercy. I'm tired. You I'm were tired. reborn. It was your birthday too, technically. <laughs> it, it was, was kind of like birthday my too. birthday too because uh, I went through a really traumatic birth. So I ended up being in the ICU for about three weeks. Um, so I didn't get to meet them right away. And that's why this meant a lot to me. Um, my son was four pounds uh six ounces and four pounds 15 ounces was my daughter so that's why this meant uh, so much to me because since i couldn't hold them and be with them right away this was the only thing that i kind of had to kind of like hold on like oh my gosh i had my babies i can't see them but i will see them soon as long as i can get myself better enough to to be with them so that's why this means a lot to me i love that that's so beautiful and as a male i'm not even qualified to really like speak on childbirth but i can only imagine how tough it is to give birth to one kid let alone to have twins and then to deal with that type of thing um complications and you've already you know um you you've done so much for you know for other people your whole life and so that's even more beautiful to know and i think that that kind of adversity just makes your ties even stronger i can only imagine to your little ones where it's like nothing can really keep you guys apart at this point no nothing not at all. I have the scars, scars and everything just, just for them. <laughs> Period. Let's go. All right. So, um, so yeah, I, um, if you got any more items, feel free. And I definitely got some questions for you whenever you run out. So don't feel too much pressure. All right. No problem. So, uh, I love Pandora bracelets. 
Um, I have my Pandora bracelet here that has a very special charm for a lot of different occasions, but there's one funny charm that I, I love and I'm going to talk about this one specifically is this charm that I have. Um, it is like a stone, a rock, and my best friend gave it to me. And the reason being is because of uh, penguins. And I don't know if you guys know that when penguins are going to mate and they're going to be with each other, they give each other a stone. I didn't so, know that. I knew that penguins <laughs> choose one mate for life, like humans, or some humans. Most people get divorced, like 50%, whatever it is now. It's yeah. crazy. But I didn't know about the stone. So so is it they both give each other a stone, or is it like the man no, gives I it? No, I think it's just one gives the, gives the other one a stone, and it's like, oh, you're, we're proposing, and we're together now. That's so that's basically what my best friend did to me. She gave me a stone because we're penguins, and together we're, we're one. <laughs> So that's why I got this one. But I have plenty of stories for the other ones, but that's the specific one I wanted to talk about tonight. I love that. That's such a perfect item. You and KO both with perfect items. I'm glad that y'all like, look, I got some stones here. None of, most of these are either um, from my spiritual healer or from my mom. Um, they're like the two people who kind of like try to push me into like this kind of, I was very closed minded when I was learning about stones and stuff, but now I'm like willing to believe or, you know, acknowledge anything. Um, <laughs> Not uh, but Chish is on a wild one tonight. And thank y'all for the favorites, by the way. If you guys are new here, you don't know how to do that. Click up top and hit that star by my name and then click on Susie's name and click the favorite button. And you guys can tap in with us anytime we're live. It'll show us it's free. And why not? If you change your mind, hit that unfavorite. You know what I mean? But then you'll end up refavoriting like Cat Boom just did. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, so penguins crystals um let me re regain my train of thought so i think that anything that you have like you know it's it kind of reminds me of uh, ko's item with sweet how they both <laughs> speaking how they both had the um the avocados it's it's something that will tie you forever you'll see that you'll think of it and it's someone who is like a rock to you so the the crystal is like a metaphor because it's a rock right so I love that for sure. Um, <laughs> Y'all are haters for real in the chat. Okay, so let's see. Um, Ghani, shout out. All right, so let's see. If you do, you have any more items? Because the items have been amazing tonight. As you know, as a host, I'm thrilled to just have uh, you know. And, and and I saw a comment. Let me see if I can find it. Um, someone was oh i'm excited that there are people willing to share things from maybell yeah like a lot of the time i feel like people will come in you know my stream included and they'll come in and they'll be like what is going on here like they'll just you know like it's some random sometimes nonsense but on here you know people i've had people cry on my show or just you know share vulnerable things or um you know laughing whatever it is like just reminiscing rejoicing and that's those are to me the most beautiful things i love storytelling um, I love listening to stories and I feel like that's, that's why I love this show so much. Um, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Ganbu. Yeah. Ganbu. It's not, it's Ganbu in uh, squid games. It's like, what's well, mine is yours type stuff. All right. Um, but my bad, were you able to, uh, or do you have any more items or should I segue into some Q and a, um, the only other thing that I have like right here in this vicinity, um, would be my painting that right, that's right behind me. And that actually means a lot to me. So I don't know if anybody can see it, but it's my dove. And I actually painted that when I was uh, going through some really hard times. I was going through group therapy and pretty much like art therapy kind of became my outlet for a while. But the meaning behind my dove, which is kind of like my everything, is just that at the end of the day, there is going to be a, like a light at the end of the tunnel at the end of the storm that, that that's why that olive branch is so important um i'm not trying to get biblical or anything but it's just more or less like when that bird went out like for the third dang time and finally came back with the olive branch it was like there's a sign of life there's something out there and it just gave me it just reminds me every day that there's going to be something else after all the crap and the bs is over like, it was just so important to me to remember that regardless of the things that you go through, that you can continue to be resilient. And, and that's a word that I used to define myself every day, because every day something new comes up 
And I just have to remember that I have to keep myself grounded because there's two tiny humans that rely on me. And at the end of the day, I have to make sure that I can be the best self that I can be for them. So, yeah. I love that. That's so beautiful. Um, I had a couple of thoughts surging through my mind and I, and I wanted, I wanted to retort to that, but I feel like I've been, I've been straying too much tonight and I really do want to ask you some more questions and I don't want to go, I don't want to go off on another tangent. So, but that's really beautiful. Honestly, these are some of the best items I've seen on my show. Um, and I don't want to like, oh, better or worse. There's no such thing. But like when it comes to like understanding the assignment, you and KO definitely understood it because everything you brought have been perfect. And it, um, it's been great to just hear about, listen about, and and I need everybody in the chat to hit Susie with a favor before we go on to this Q and A. Make sure y'all tap in. One of the newer top badges, she said she just got it within the last month, but she's super humble. You would never know. Um, those are my favorite type of people to interact with. Also, shout out to everyone trying to request the guest box. I'm gonna repeat myself and sound like a broken record. No one's getting in the guest box unless you're one of our scheduled featured guests until 9:15. So what is that? 20, 35 minutes from now. So keep that in mind. I'm not ignoring y'all. Susie. So let's see. Uh, we already talked a little about streaming. We got into some, you know, some stories. We got to know about your little ones. Let's talk about you when you were younger. I asked this question to KO. I like to ask a few of the questions I have to everyone. And there's some I like to switch it up. What was your favorite childhood toy? What was my favorite childhood toy? Uh, my Polly Pocket. Polly Pocket? Polly Pocket. Does everybody remember what a Polly Pocket is? I don't. Put me on game. It was just, <laughs> it's just these, it's just these little like, these little old school little girl toys. Like they were just really little. They're like Polly Pockets. Like I don't even, I, yeah, you can collect them. There's a bunch of sets of them, and like I was obsessed. I was obsessed with Polly Pockets. Okay, okay, okay. I love it though. Okay. And the nano Every, pet. When you when when kids kids are so you know kids are so funny like we'll, like as a kid even myself like you'll obsess over the weirdest things if you but if you find something like that you like like you're gonna like who remembers pogs like you know a lot of kid had like pokemon cards and just like random things like why does it bring so much joy to collect these things it's just like a, uh, just having a collection and that's a big part of the show for me is like some people will bring on collections that they've had since they were a kid like chris casper came on my show and showed a pokemon collection and he's actually like privy to all the like you know like what they're worth and whatnot like he a full he has a, Pokemon collection? Okay. a full Makes blown sense. like he yeah he had like he was on my very first episode of the show and he was like we went over time because he was still showing the collect i was into it i was like because i used to have the pokemon cards i sold them i traded my two best ones for a kobe plaque that i still have in my main studio and that plaque i looked it up it was going on ebay for 10 racks but the Pokemon cards are still probably worth more, but I'll never sell that Kobe John because that's my, you know what I mean? Or I don't know how his face got covered, but I'm going to have to fix that later. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. Um, what is your, what's your favorite album? You got a favorite album of all time? Oh my gosh, my favorite album. Uh, I don't, I just listen to a little bit of everything. I'm the same way. I don't even know what I'd say if I was asked for my favorite album. I, I don't even have an answer for that. Um, all right, let's see. Do you are you a homebody? Do you watch Netflix TV? Do you watch like series? Anything like um, that? Yes, but I don't watch TV that often. The last series that I watched was The Handmaid's Tale, and that was on Hulu. I want to know your favorite binge TV series ever, where you couldn't stop. It could have been ten years ago, five years ago. Well, you couldn't stop watching. TV series, for sure. Um, oh my gosh. Breaking Bad, there you go. That was my favorite nonstop. I watched mm -hmm. it from beginning to end and I could not stop watching it. And Me then too. I realized that that became real life and I couldn't watch it anymore. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, that's probably my favorite show of all time. And and my old man showed me that show. I was It was really first starting. And the reason he showed me it is because his friend was playing Jesse Pinkman's dad in the show. Really? So he's like, yeah. His name is Michael Bofshever. That's the name of Jesse Pinkman's dad. And he's he's like a good friend of my dad. So he was like, yeah, check this show out. I think you'll like it, you know, because he knows the kind of shows I like. But it was like really bad production the first season. So I'm watching the first season. I'm like, this show is kind of ghetto. Like the 
you know, it's not really like, you know, but then by the second season, it's like, whoa, it's like a Hollywood show, you know, and like as the, as the show goes on, the production and the, you know, the little um, clips they show of the city where they'll like fast forward through the night and you'll see like, those are such beautiful shots. It's such, it's so well filmed. Um, but yeah, I love that show, Breaking Bad. And if you like that, you should check out the show Ozarks. Very similar uh, show. I tried, I tried to get into it and I don't know what it was about it that I couldn't, I couldn't like. You weren't, you were messing with Stephen Bateman? Is that his name? I don't know what it, what, what it was. Like I started to watch that after I watched The 100. I don't know if you ever watched that. I didn't see it. Ruth it's Langmore. Um, but yeah, uh, there's so many other good shows, but I'm not going to, I myself, like even in my work, there will be like shows playing on, you know, um, <clears throat> I've seen way too many shows. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, do you, have you ever gamed? Like when you were younger, did you game? You play video games? Never. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, if you had a favorite old school video game, all right, let's see. What is, I ask this to everyone, I got to know for you. What is your most embarrassing moment you can recall? Like I said to KO, you couldn't laugh about it at the time, but now it's kind of funny. Like if it was someone else, you would have been on the ground laughing. Like, I don't know if this is funny or not, but my most embarrassing moment was, uh, I was in something in church called like Pathfinders, right? It's kind of like Boy Scouts, but for church, right? So we all went to the pool, it's time for pool time. And I'm like, I don't know, probably like 10. Still can't swim, still don't know how to swim till this day. Everybody else is going off the, like, the diving board and <laughs> the slide and everything. And it's a 10 foot pool. Like it's a deep, it's a deep pool. Wow, like, did somebody say deep? My bad, go on. <laughs> Either way, um, I, I get pressure to go down the slide and I, and I do it anyways. And I'm like, it's gonna be okay. I'll just hold my breath. So my mom's on the other side and she can see me going down the slide knowing that I cannot swim. And they're like evacuating this pool. As what I'm were you like, thinking? Oh. What were you thinking? Do you remember your like, thought right, process going down like, the slide? I can hold my breath long enough, it'll be okay. I'll make it back up, I'll float. I don't know. Because gonna... when you hold your breath, you float. For everyone who still doesn't know how to swim, <laughs> if you still don't know how to swim, I know this, there's somebody or if some people out there that can't swim still. You might be in your 30s or 40s. If you hold your breath, you <laughs> will float. Remember that. <laughs> anyway, so do your strokes when your breath is inhaled, not exhaled. Wow, did somebody say strokes? All right, my bad. Let me chill. This is a future show. I'm out of line right now. <laughs> All right. Um, they saved me. <laughs> and that was the end of the story. And I wasn't allowed to go back to the pool after that. I love it. I love it. Okay. By the way, yo, this show goes on until um, 15 after. So we got 30 minutes still. We got plenty of time. So I want you to tell me, I want you to describe rather to us your perfect day off. No kids, no streaming, nothing. It's just you and blank. All right. I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to go to the Waffle House because I don't care how ghetto it is. I'm going to the Waffle House because I love my chocolate chip waffles. And then the, the, the fries and everything and all the above. After that, I'm going straight to a massage, early morning massage. It'd be amazing. Go to the nail salon, get my toes done, my nails done, my eyebrows done, get my hair done. They give you the little massages in those in those salons too, right? The techs. They, you, yep, they, they wrap your legs. They do the they do the everything, right? So um, chocolate chip waffles, massages, nail techs, what's next? And then after that, hopefully I'm somewhere that there's water. So I'll go to the beach and get me a couple, like, I don't know, some drinks and tan, get, get this yellow tint and turn it brown, make myself look real nice at the beach, and then sleep. Sleep. That sounds, that sounds heavenly. Put a one in the chat if that sounds like a good day to you. Big J. Shout out to Jay one more time. I shouted him out at the beginning. He's the one who uh, connected me with Susie. If you guys are in the chat and you're shy or whatever the case is, maybe you're not in touch with me and you want to be on my show, you can reach out to JTV. He, he, by the way, he just trademarked his name. It's looking crispy. <laughs> and you see that John up there in my name too, if you click on the full name, but uh, those new emojis trademarked. All right, so 
Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's all. I mean, I'm a, I've never gotten like a manicure and stuff, but like when you talk about the massage and the drinks on the beach, like that's my side. The beach is my place. That's my happy place for sure. Um, yeah. And when I'm at the beach, I'm a lot, I get a lot, you know, like, the, like you get color from it, but it's just like the sun and just, it's just something about it. You know, they say it's vitamin D. You just feel amazing. All right. So one last question while we still have you on here, by the way, thanks again for coming. I know it was somewhat short notice. Of course. Um, shout out to all the haters in the chat. All right, let's see. Would you rather I go to the past? Would you rather go to the past and meet your ancestors or go to the future and meet your future relatives? That's a hard one. Well, oh, did somebody say it's a hot mother? I can't do that. <laughs> David Best at that moment. <laughs> you see, I'm trying to focus now. You distracted me. Um, I think I want to. I think I want to go to the past. I think I want to go to the past, just because these are people that I've already heard stories about, like family reunions and pissing pictures of, and it and it would just make sense. I'll be like, oh, that's not only that. Oh, this is this person or that person. I'll be like, okay. I know who you are now. I'm glad I've got to meet you and understand the stories we talk about, like, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas every single year. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And for me, I choose the same thing, but more so I feel like it's because of my fear of like the unknown. It's like, if I, what if I go to the future and they're like, oh, you're dead in like a year. I'm not going to be able to live my life the same way. You know what I mean? Or like whatever the case may be. Um, I feel like it's like cheating to go to the future. Going to the past, not saying that that's not like some weird, you know, um, I don't want to say ungodly, but I feel like you'd gain perspective. And like you said, just people you've heard stories about, you get to see them in the flesh, hear them, speak to them. Um, that's beautiful. All right. So, I mean, I could keep asking a lot of questions, but we should get to our next guest at this point. So I need everybody in the chat, hit Susie with the favorite one more time because you said this at the beginning but tell everyone your streaming schedule and also her Instagram is plugged into her bio yes hit her with the favorite tapping with her on IG you know the drill so my streaming schedule is usually Monday Wednesdays Fridays Saturdays from 8 to 11 p.m eastern standard time um so yeah just catch me when you catch me one of the newest top badges give it up for Susie <laughs> Whoops, I almost played something bad. <laughs> it was nice to meet you. Likewise. Stay blessed. Thank you. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Um, shout out to our guests so far. We had KO. That was Susie. And shout out to all the top supporters of this stream. You know what I mean? Hey, make sure you guys click up top, hit the favorite on everybody. All right. Um, with that being said, if our final guest of the evening is ready, it's the box. And everybody who's been requesting the box all night, I've seen all kind of box requests. Oh, um, box requests. Open mic will start in about 24 minutes. So stay tuned for that. Anyone can come up, but hopefully y'all have some kind of, you know, um, savoir faire. That's French for know how. Know how. You know what I mean? This isn't like, <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say. All right. So that being said, shout out to our next guest. She's actually the newest top badge on the app. Everybody give a welcome to Lonnie. Hey, Brody. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I've seen you here for a second and, um, Technically, this is this is the you know I mean this is the slot with the most views. Yeah, everyone congratulate her on her top badge. That's definitely an accomplishment. I remember um, <clears throat> trying to get my top badge, and when I finally got it, I was like, I was so thrilled. And now I'm kind of like whatever about it a year later. But um, <laughs> but to people, <laughs> but to people who I'm saying for myself, but to people who like are trying to get that thing it's like whoa you know what i mean there's gonna be a lot of envy out there and um and a lot of congratulations 
Thank too. But it's not just about the congratulations, right? But like who sticks around after that part? That's where you get to find out what's what. Thank you. Yeah, shout out. So um, I don't know if you were able to prepare items, but either way, I got a grip of questions I could yeah. ask. So all right, let's get it. I just want you to know, this is how you know I rock with you. These are very, I don't even talk about these for real. I don't know. But I'm going to do it for you. Well, I'm honored then. Let's go. Y'all heard that here. Hit yeah, Lonnie with the favorite. <laughs> well, the first one, the first item that I have, thank you. The first item that I have is this socks hat. And that was only because it was my dad. He always wore this damn hat every day, like every day. No matter what color he was wearing, he wore a hat. And he was just like, basically, it's so corny what he said. He said he wore the hat all the time because when he bought the hat, he left the hat, and uh, uh, the man who he bought the hat from ended up finding him and bringing it to him because it just so happened that my mom, her water broke when he was purchasing it. He was at a Sox game. So he just always kept it. Like, he was like, I just, I don't know. It's just crazy. That makes it, that, yeah. Yeah, he said, I feel like it brought him good luck. Like, everything went well and stuff. Blah, blah, blah. So for those of y'all who don't get it, like, the moment that basically Lonnie was about to be born, that hat was yeah, involved. Yeah, he was at a Sox game, like buying a hat, like in a concession stand. And like, when that happened, at that moment. he said, My mom called him, was just like, My wallet broke. And he left the hat at the thing. And he, he signed left up. the hat yeah. at the stand. Yeah, he signed up to do this contest. Because, you know, if you know, like, if you go to sports events, a lot of sports events, they have like contests where you can win stuff like cars and shit. And he ended up winning some. So they had like his number and contact information. And like you like fat like called him and like held on to the hat for a long like for a <laughs> that's lit. I love that. Honestly, like that's such a relatable story because like so many people out there put a one in the chat if you have a you know you have you're lucky enough to have a father who was a sports fan. Put a one like that's just oh. a you. It's ubiquitous. So like just hearing that story, it just resonates. It's like you can picture it. I could picture myself like getting a Laker or some kind of oh. Oh, I gotta go to the hospital. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not as big of a Laker fan now as like when, you know, Kobe was in there, but um I would still be like, man, you know, like I gotta dip. I gotta dip yeah. the game. But uh but yeah, at the end of the day, not a lot of people are blessed to even have, you know what I mean, both parents, let alone even one. Yeah. So being able to have, you know, a story that ties in, that's lit. Yeah, no, yeah. That's why, you know, when he passed, it was just kind of like, I can't get rid of the hat because he had a whole bunch of stuff. And I was like, no. Nah. Like, I, he specifically told me the story. I feel like he'd be upset. <laughs> that's forever, period. And honestly, like, that's the kind of thing where, like, you might find your future husband and he's wearing a socks hat, you know what I mean? And he'll have a story about it where, like, yeah. this the story correlates to yours in some way. Tight. Mm -hmm. That's how life is. Yeah. Um. All right, so yeah, out here like that White Sox is like it's associated with some gang stuff. Like there's bars out here where you can't even wear that hat, or like you can't wear certain hats like at these bars. Like, um, but um, but yeah. Anyway, so let's see. Um, you good? But if you have any other items, feel free. Otherwise, I can dive into some Q and A. Uh, this one, this one. But this item, I'll explain it. So like when I was like in high school, like my freshman, so I'm your high school, I used to do like this volunteer thing. We have a, a Make-A-Wish Foundation hospital at my, in my state. And there was this kid I used to always play with. And he had like, I will play with him like every time, every week, I would go up there once a week on a Saturday, that's how I spent my Saturday, blah, blah, blah. And like before he had like a life, like a, a surgery, he wanted to get this to me. He was just like, I want you to have this. And unfortunately, like the surgery went well, but unfortunately, like three months after he had the surgery, he it, it messed up. So, end up, you know. And I was just like, wow, you know, like I, I never thought that me playing, you know, just going up there and spending time, because a lot of those kids, they just want to feel like kids. They just want to have something to do, somebody to play with, blah blah blah. And they'd be up there just. And he he recognized me because when I came in, I didn't even know. He was just like, hey. Like his mom came up to me and gave it to me. I was like, Kyler wants you to have this. And she said that he's had it since he was a kid. So I just makes me feel, makes me feel something. That's so beautiful. 
And honestly, I feel like a lot of the time, um, you know, it's a cliche, but they say, you don't know what you have till it's gone. And um, a lot of the time, it's a privilege to have items like that, that you can, um, that people can live on through when when they're gone. Because at the end of the day, that's why, you know, like celebrities, when they pass away, their memorabilia becomes so much more valuable. Because it's like, those are priceless things. And it's like, like, Kobe, I got a Kobe jersey. And it's, I don't even wear it. Like, I don't even wear it anymore. I just keep it. I got one like that hanging up on my bed, like in front, uh, 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 anyone who's seen me stream from my bed late at night, they know it's like hanging up there too. I got a few Kobe jerseys, but yeah, that one, like I have a specific one that's just like, it ha- I don't wear it, it just hangs there. That's how I feel about Clay Thompson. I got a lot of Clay Thompson jerseys of all different facets of his life. <laughs> Why Clay? I just feel like, I like, like, okay, he's on a team with Steph. I like players who are just great. I feel like he's he's one of those players where he's going to be successful. I'm going to just say this. Those 941 games that he was hurt with his ace, with his injuries, they didn't win. No championship. So people can say whatever they want to say about him, but they was definitely championshipless. And he's going to give you hard-nosed basketball. He's going to give you the classic defense, the mm-hmm. classic moving without the ball. And I feel like nowadays, mm-hmm. basketball players don't do that. Like, they don't what have you no- know about that? Are you a hooper? Yeah, I play basketball my whole oh, life. Oh, me too. <laughs> See, Clay, Clay is such a good teammate because people give Draymond that credit because he's like, you know, he, he's the glue that ties the team together. Yeah, but Clay is literally like bailed that team out of so many games and, during their championship runs. Like Steph don't really stick no defense for real, but you're going to go on Clay's side, you're going to get locked down, and then you got to go to Steph's side. But you already keep on dribble, so he's going to steal it from you. Like Steph, Clay- Steph gets his steals because of Clay, yeah. his on ball D. Like Steph knows how to read the passing lanes. Clay will pressure him, make him throw a bad pass, and then he reaps the benefits of that stat on the stat sheet. But but Allen Iverson, he'll tell you, he'll be like, yo, like I led the NBA in steals and I'm a horrible defender. Because he was little. Allen Iverson, his team was filled with defenders and he was the only dude who could really get a bucket, but he took him to the championship like that. Ooh. But Clay is one of those guys where like Steph isn't getting ships without him. And people look at Steph. Some people, I think Magic Johnson's the best point guard, but I'm biased. I'm a Laker fan. I got a Magic Johnson poster Where's right there. I about your biases. And some people be trying to act like that's how they really feel, no bias. Curry would not have no ships without Clay. I'm just saying that. I'll be trying to say that, but people don't be hearing me. People, people, and I just feel like people take for granted that Clay is humble and he don't have to always be in the limelight. People really take that for granted. Like, that's a wonderful player to be with, to let you shine and not feel like he just got to – he's certified in himself and his position and what he do to where he don't have to be in your life. He can let you shine. But just know, Steph Clay is the only person to beat Steph in a three-point contest and the only person <laughs> on more points in the quarter than, than, than Steph does. Facts. And Steph actually just broke his record before that. He had the most threes <laughs> ever in a game. And he's got the, he's got the most points ever in a game. Yeah. I mean, St- uh, Clay's got the most points ever in a quarter in NBA 65. history. I was He's like, like 35, game. right? Yep, 35 in a third quarter. He had 65 for the night. Yeah, facts. That's wild. I was at that game. I was like, Sheesh. You were at that game? That's, that's wild. And you're a Clay like, fan. That's crazy. Yeah, that's like fine. being at Kobe's 81 game. Uh, you went to that game? Nah. I wish. Awesome. I wish. Nah. But um, so let's see. So I asked this question to everyone else, but I want to hear it for you because I feel like everything we talked about has been you. You're very like calm, cool, collect. I feel like you're in your comfort zone no matter what. You know, this is our first time really talking like this. Um, I want you to tell me your most embarrassing moment, though. Tell all of us. Think of something. And, you know, I feel like. I feel like both oh, Susie yeah. and KO kind of gave us like a bailout moment. Like, I feel like there was something more embarrassing. But they didn't really want to delve into that, so they gave us like the backup, like the silver medal moment or the bronze. I'm oh, trying to get the gold, if you're willing. I know mine. I know mine. When I was in kindergarten, uh, I had to. <laughs> People tell me I look like Clay. That's funny though. Oh, uh, that's what they I hope say. that's not breadwinner though. You like? <laughs> <laughs> right, <go ahead. laughs> not kind of. But no, um, I can see it. I can see it. Y'all both got a big forehead and like ears. Wow. Big was, forehead, big ears. But it worked for y'all. Like the way y'all head shape, it worked. <laughs> anyway, when um I was in <laughs> when I was in kindergarten, um, I beat on myself in my chair. When I was That's kid. karma. That's karma for what you would do 
How old are you? I'm 23. 23. So that's karma for what you would say 18 years later. Yeah. On no. a Thursday night. And it was November. crazy. Like it was kind of very embarrassing. Like, because I was asleep. Like I peed on myself in my sleep. So my classmates woke me up. It was like, uh, uh. And then you know I had pee pee pants. So then everybody was coming me because everybody they had to call my mom, and my mom had to come change me in the bath. It was just a lot. And I that they like I didn't live that down for a long time. It just so happened a lot of my friends I was in kindergarten with we went through grade schools together. So like you know in school they oh when you come to school when you first on your first day everybody write one of the memorable moments they had since they've been in school that we've been in the same class because we all just went grades up together type of thing. And every, oh the time Lonnie peed on her pants in front of the whole class like <laughs> like no. Oh. <laughs> and I remember that day very vividly, like, because my mom, she was like, why didn't you get up and go to the bathroom? Like, she was mad that I peed on my <laughs> She was embarrassed for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as a kid, you can't get, you, your parents got to give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. I remember the last time I peed my pants. I don't remember why I did it either. I remember being on like a field and I was <laughs> out of town. I was at my cousins, like my cousins who live like an hour or two away. I was with them somewhere, and I think I was looking for a bath. I can't remember, but I was young. I was young enough where, like, I can't fully remember it. I was probably kindergarten age, and I remember peeing in my pants. And I just remember it, like, it stung really bad. Like, it burned because, like, I was trying to, like, walk in my pants, and it was, like, I don't know how to explain it. It was bad, though. It was, like, it was everyone hey, – anyway, who's seen Billy Madison? You ain't cool unless you pee your pants. Everyone my age pees their pants. It's the coolest. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if it's happened to you, shout out, man. I peed my pants yesterday at work. Who would have thunk? Now you're just lying. Now you just capping. It's the old boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a random question. This question is inspired by Raider Rob. I was at a game with him, and he told me how he liked his water, which is how I like it. So do you prefer your water ice or room temperature? I like, you know, I like ice water, but you know, cold water not good for you. Mm -hmm. I, I always say that too when I ask this question. I mm -hmm. prefer my, my water room temperature. However, there are variables. If I just hooped, if it's hot, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? If it's like really hot or if like. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I appreciate y'all with the ice. He's talking about room temperature water. I that want the room good. temperature if I'm just <laughs> drinking like a couple of little sips. But if I'm like really parched and it's a hot day or I, or I just finished playing basketball, I got to have ice, like cold water. You know what I mean? Like if I just like, if I'm really thirsty, but when it comes to just like regular during the day hydration, I'd rather have it, you know, yeah. the healthy way. I'm an ice chewer. That's why. But I be trying to get myself, like I be trying to train myself to drink room temperature water. I chew on ice chips too. There's something therapeutic about that. Yeah, it is. It's the, the, the noise is oddly satisfying to my ears. I used to hear my sister chewing ice chips like all night long. Like I, <laughs> like she just, ha I'd hear it down the hall. Like, <laughs> no, like it make like, me want some ice chips. I'm like, man. Like, I, I know a lot of women that, that chew on ice. It's like a thing. It's like a woman thing, maybe. It's an oral fixation. We're to Freud. The Freudian philosophy. Well, well um, all right, so let's do one more question, y'all. Everybody who's just joining us, shout out to the one to the newest top badge, technically Lonnie. Hit her with a favor, pull up. She got her Instagram in her bio too. I do. Let me see if you got anything else in there. Nope. Just like you know, what I mean, I don't, I don't okay. either. I don't have a TikTok like all these. You know, what I mean, the kids these days. Um. Yeah. All right. Would you rather have a pause button? Or a we a rewind button. A rewind button. Elaborate. Uh, because you know, there's a few people that aren't here anymore that I wish I could have said some things that I didn't get to say. You know, mm -hmm. at a young age, I lost uh, a good amount of close people, and it taught me a lot about life. But at the time, I wasn't able to find the words. Now I have the words. You know, so if I could, I would. Mm. I feel that. That's real. And at the end of the day, you know, um, this is something I always preach and I don't want to be too like mushy or sentimental. I do this sometimes, you know, um, never, never go to sleep on bad terms with someone who you really care about because tomorrow is never guaranteed. And and I'm, I'm a hypocrite saying this because there's people I'm actively not on good terms with who mean the world to me. But sometimes there's nothing you can do because 
you, you got to separate yourself. You have to take care of yourself first. Um, but you got to like me. It's funny you said that because me and my one of my best friends, me and him, we've been best friends since young, like eighth grade. And we're not talking. We're not talking because we're, he is funny. Like we're, we're the same. So like if I don't reach out to him, he's not going to reach out to me. We're just going to live our mate. Like when I want to check on him, I call his girlfriend. And I just be like, don't tell him. Don't tell him that I call him. Stubborn as two mules. <laughs> like, I just want to make sure that he's all right. And she's like, she, it's funny that we talking about this. She just called me earlier and she was like, y'all need to stop this. <laughs> like, y'all both be asking me how each other are. Like, y'all don't know that. <laughs> both ask me. Hey, um, tell Lonnie I said hi. <laughs> That's really <how> <laughs> And at the end of the day, look, I'm going to tell y'all like this. A lot of the time, people who you have the most differences with or you can't see eye to eye, those same people you'll have the most things in common with. And a lot of the time, you can't see the things that you hate in them are things you really hate in yourself. The things you hate the most in others, you can't stand it. Those are things that are within you. And it's, it's always harder to practice what you preach um, when it's you, when it's you, because it's facts. funny. Like until we fell out, I didn't realize because we haven't talked in a couple months. I didn't realize how close we were. Like football season, every Thursday we go to Buffalo Wild Wings and we watch football over there, because in our state they have like half wings and like hella a lot of liquor. It's Monday over here for us, but Thursday's the day. So it'd be funny, like at, like today. What's today? I didn't go today. It'd be funny, like every Thursday I think about it, like it crossed my mind. Just hit him up. Put a one in the chat if you think Lonnie should hit him up. Y'all should go out. Just be the third wheel. Whatever. Go get some wings, watch some football, rekindle. You know what I'm saying? Like She don't watch sports. She it don't matter. She'll watch it for him. She would. She would. Put a one in the chat if you're a woman who doesn't like sports, but you would watch it with your man. That's nice. I will. See, that there ain't that many ones in there. I don't even care. Y'all look at Chish. Oh. One thing I can say though, like, I'm I'm blessed that I like sports already. So like, I don't have to make myself watch it. Like, all my ex boyfriends always love that that they can watch sports all day, and I'm gonna watch it right with them. Cause me, I'm like an ESPN head, and I watch it all day. If I I wake up to it, I can't watch that John all day because they just be repeating things, and I'll be going senile. Like, wait, I just saw this. Yeah, I got this. Like, this, I think it's an app on a um, on a Fire Stick, like where it go to different like channels for different people because i would like to hear like the shannon and the skips and the, what they gotta say <laughs> I, be I feel that you. for sure at the end of the day i feel like like i'll be impressed with a woman if they can even name like players on another team i'll be like okay like or if i name a player and they're like oh yeah and then their teammate and they'll name their teammate i'll be like oh okay yeah, like, it's so funny like when we like, like like we were saying on thursdays like we'd be going out and like it'd be so funny like Man, like they'll look at me like around, but then like when I start talking, like okay, and I get the same facts, they get to turn in their heads. Like, <laughs> I always say, like that's so funny. I'm dead. Kylie said I go to game party for parties for snacks, and then I chat with the wives. Mm-hmm. I'm dead. I chat with the wives. I like not he ain't fun. saying it like that. He's like, you know, you got to know him to understand. But um. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yo, Lonnie's a vibe. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like, we've known each other for a minute, but this is the first time we've really talked like this. And you're cool, man. I see why they give you a top badge. At the end of the day, like, you have to be able to create something out of nothing. And I feel like, for me, like, I love talking. I love getting to know people. I love hearing stories, telling stories. And you're just a conversationalist. It's natural for you. It's easy. And, and honestly, same for everybody on the card tonight. You know what I mean? K.O. and Susie, like, it was both. It was all just really easily, like nothing felt forced. And um, I think y'all are all really dope. This is one of my favorite cards I've had. And and I, I prepared it all, you know what I mean? Pretty much today. But um, <clears throat> but yo, so so tell us a little bit more about yourself. Like, um, let's see, um, what do you like to do in your stream? Anything else like you want to say while we still got you yeah. here? Uh, what do I like to do on my stream? On my stream, to be honest, like how we talking, I just be talking now. I talk about sports a lot on my stream and I like cars too. So like sometimes. What's your dream whip? You got a whip right now. Any whip you want for free. 
Mercedes Benz Maybach, like, cause I have a, I have a truck, like a smaller version, but I'm a small person. So, you know, all small people like to feel big. And How tall are you? I'm 4'11". Oh, okay. Okay. She's a giant. You five feet what? With shoes on. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> what you call it? Um, I was going to say, uh, I feel like everybody thinks that I'm short too. Like when I, when I, when I meet people off the app, they're like, Oh, because like I have this like young looking face or whatever. And like, people are like, Oh, he's short. You know what I mean? But too short. Yeah. I follow you. Like I'm the just, rapper. You like six, two. I'm like, yeah, I'm like six, two, six, three, somewhere in there. I could tell. Nobody no. could tell. No, like everybody who I meet is in shock. You could tell, like, like right here or something. I never forget. One of my doctors told me that, like, in childhood, you could tell how tall a person is. By. From the jaw? Yeah. Google it. It's just a real fact. Google it. I know people with chiseled jaws that are five foot six, and men. So I don't know if that's true. A boyish. I look. You look like a chiseled cheekbone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm weak. Yo, everybody, hit the favorite on Lonnie. She's cool. I'm not gonna lie to you. Hit that fade. Give her a round of applause. Visit her screen. Tell her what's up. Talk sports, <clears throat> cars, life, experiences. It's like, you know, all that good stuff. Like, you know, me personally, I feel like a lot of people put pressure on being a streamer. But one thing I know I learned is to really be yourself. Because to be honest, like people feel like they need content. Like I don't want to say I don't have none because I feel like I am my own content. Mm-hmm. But it works for me. Like what I do work. I I think everybody have their own thing. If it works for you, don't stop doing it. I love that. And at the end of the day, like I've had times where like I try like content, whatever it is, like I've tried to like Yeah, it don't feel produce content. And then I've had like like stretches where I put in crazy work for like months where I'm producing good content. I know it's good. Yeah. And then I've had stretches where I was just chilling being me. And I would, and I don't want to say the word successful, but in terms of like every accolade that you can have on here, I was so much more successful doing that. So, like you said, you could be your own content, yeah. um, authenticity facts. I had something else I wanted to say, but my ass is over here, little turn. I forgot what the fuck I was gonna say. Now, now we're not featured anymore, so you could be like, <laughs> whatever the fuck. But um, <laughs> my boy got puppies here. I'm not talking about titties, but like literally, like puppies, like. He got it. He just had a whole litter. And this is one of my good friends on here. Um, wait, what did Gentry say? Oh, shit, baby. What's good, baby? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, he had a lot. Now I can acknowledge the chat. Yo, if you, if you felt ignored, put something in the chat right now. I'll acknowledge your. Ah. Uh, is he going to. Are you going to keep them all? No, what I got to. I'm going to rehome them. Rehome them. That's, a, that's another name for like, for what? Rehome them? <laughs> uh, I've never like, heard that that nomenclature. Well, it's okay. It's like I'm not selling the puppies. I'm just trying to find them a new home. Oh. I know, I know that, I know oh. that. But what's the main word? Uh, have them adopted? Re-homing. I don't know. Well, you too far. Not rehoming. I'm trying to smoke up. Uh, like people charge a rehoming fee and stuff usually. A rehoming fee? Seriously? It's, I rescued my dog. Like, go, on, go on Craigslist sometime. Not a rehoming fee. Craig, Craig Craigslist is like, hold on, I gotta change my picture. Craigslist, like, there'd be some shady ass shit on there. Man, I keep forgetting yeah, I s- put myself in this auction. I'm dreading this shit. If y'all wanna come, yo, call me for a own. rose. Pull up to this fucking auction on Saturday. You feel me? If y'all wanna hold me down, please hold me down. I gotta step away for maybe like one minute. I gotta do a couple things. Um. Oh shit, yo, Brody, I got that Brittany and mine off Craigslist. I'll be here. With a hundred and fifty dollar yeah. rehoming fee. And Hawkeye, if you want to perform, my guy, Nico, if you in here, anyone else who wants to perform. Um, I've seen a bunch of box requests throughout the night that's gone now. I'm gonna get food. I, I'm gonna cook food at some point. I'm not really hungry now. Once I smoke, I'll be starving, I'm sure. And I'm mm-hmm. just chilling right now. I'm gonna be right back. Yo, shout out Crystal. Shout out to all the top supporters of the stream. I haven't really been on this week, so shout out to y'all for not forgetting about me. Crystal, Jen, Hazel, Snow. Cap boom, top badge, cap boom, chish and fibs, kitchen, Nico, emoji J, KO, what the fuck? Shout out all y'all. 
Niners Gen, I've been seeing you in my stream since that one battle. Sometimes you just got to make an impression where you make someone laugh and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to come to his stream when I see him on. I'll make y'all fucking laugh. If you stick around long enough, that boringness will pay off because I swear to God, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm humble. I'm going to be like, oh, this or that. But like, like if I had to toot my own horn, I'm a funny motherfucker. Just stick around, find out. He said, I'm a funny guy. I'm that nigga. I'm that guy. <laughs> pretty funny. You know, I don't want to toot my own horn or nothing, but I'm going to toot it anyway. Toot, toot. You know, me personally, I feel like there's nothing wrong with tooting your own horn. I feel like you're your biggest cheerleader. Like, who going who gonna to hype you up if you don't hype yourself up? Nobody. Low-key, I just want y'all to know, the whole time I was doing this show, I was very high. <laughs> like very high very high but you guys have been great like i've enjoyed you all you know like he said like i've been knowing him for a long time but um this is our first time really having a conversation you guys are all cool i wish we lived in the same place i would definitely um take one of your dogs and take good care of it oh I'm be i bet you would here's the here's the poppy oh look at look at the nurturer Watching over the, the cub litter. Looking like y'all playing too much. Y'all all need to sit down. <laughs> I wonder what it's like to be a dog and push out like hella dogs. Because us as women. Mama hates it. Your mama hates them. Yeah, I know you've seen her, Crystal. She's looking at them like, good night. <laughs> good to the night. This is the dad. Well, he's looking at them like, good night. <laughs> yeah. mom, mom took off. She just got done feeding them. Oh. And she, I mean. That's the bad. I have to put, have to put her in the kennel. Like, now, it's been four weeks of her uh, nurt, uh, nursing them. And, like, look at this. This one's trying to chew on the other one, thinking it's got milk. Yeah, I see. I see. And that's the, cause that, that's another dog, right? The brown thing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this one right in the middle. Yo, it's fucking chilly yeah. out here, bro. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, cut there was one stuff. random on the whole litter. It came from uh, the mother's dad. Oh. Oh. Uh, I love dogs. I love animals. They look so peaceful. He's about to that one's peaceful. Dude, this that one seems like it's going to be by itself, like it's going to be more of the conservative one. Not really much into crowd. He's the chillest one. He just like hangs out in the back. And, like, yeah, I see. Yeah, I can tell. Which one is your most hyper one yet? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Look at those puppies. That pu Those puppies got such shock value. Yeah, I know. They all have different personalities. Two puppies. Oh. They're all trying to nap. They're supposed to be awake. They're new to the world. Well, I can't find my bong anywhere, so it looks like we about to roll up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that one. That one, the curious one. Yeah, that one's going to be a handful. Because he see you calling him, but he acting like he don't want to come to you. I'm already. taking baby bitch shots right now because I'm trying to drink and I'll get mama. fucked up. I already know. Yeah, that one's going to be a handful. Mm. Wow, did somebody say a handful? <laughs> Cheers, KB. What kind of puppy, yo? Shout out to everyone, yo. Crystal. Shout out to everyone who's in here. Savage, B, Niners, Jen. Okay, okay. Man, where did I put my shit, man? I'm so disorganized today. Callie, what the fuck's going on, my guy? Yo, Callie, you've been getting around these streets. I see you everywhere, fam. Niners Jen, what's up? Shout out to shout out to your dude. He's cool too. Um, shout out to everyone who found someone on here and y'all are like together. That shit's crazy to me. It's yeah, like, shout out to that too, because I'll be hearing stories and I'll be shocked. So shout out to I love love. Shout out to love. You know, and if y'all didn't know, you have infinite soulmates on Earth. 
and your soulmates can be strictly platonic. It could be like, like for instance, Swiss is one of my soulmates. And I could never kiss a man or suck dick or do anything gay. I'm just going to put that on. Like, I have gay friends. I don't judge them. I can never do some gay shit, period. But Swiss is like, he's one of my soul brothers. Like, I met this man less than three months ago. I can't really quantify the time. But I, I met him less. But like, he, him and I have things in common. I can name like 10 things that oh, nobody else I've met on this app have in common whether it's like a song we both know or whether it's some shit that we both like connected on, you know what I'm saying? Like, and at the end of the day, to me, that's like a sign from God where it's like, I believe like I'm very spiritual. I'm not religious. So when um, it was Susie who was sharing some biblical things, this is what I was thinking in my head, but I didn't say it because I was going to go on a rant and I didn't want to rant, but now I can fucking rant because it's my stream again. Um, I don't give a fuck about what religion you are. I accept you. All religions have some kind of principles that you can live your life by in a good way. I don't give a fuck if you're Christian, Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, Islamic, whatever the fuck you are. I accept you for who you are, period. And so I'm more spiritual, but I do believe in God. And I do believe that there's karma. And I do believe everything happens for a reason. And I do believe in free will. And there's not that many you know, religions that encompass all of those things. So I take little bits and pieces from what I do learn. I've taken I've, um, philosophy of religion courses. Oh, man. And if y'all are tired of hearing me rant, good, because I'm going to shut the fuck up because we have a true legend in our presence. Hawkeye, 91 years old, and he's about to perform, I believe. This is a shot in the dark, <laughs> like in the dark in a hotel room all over the walls because you don't know where else to finish. I think it's number 188. 189. 189. I was born in 89. I'm an old head. Let's get it. I was one off. What do you take away from Scientology? Snowy. Scientology. I know like Tom Cruise is a Scientologist. I know like other celebrities are. This is my belief, bro. I love conspiracy theories. I love conspiracy theories. I love to hear about them. I love to listen to them. I love to learn about them. I don't believe shit. And my thing is this, the reason I love them is because I consider everything a possibility. Even the most far-fetched bullshit, I'll consider it a possibility. So if it turns out that we figure out, oh, this is the case and this is how it is. I will have already fathomed that. I will have already accepted it as a possibility because I heard that theory. And I'm gonna <clears throat> want to clap while I talk, but I'll clap right there because yeah. Because I heard that theory, you feel me? So I listen to everything I hear. I accept it as a possibility. Do I go and spread that as like information that I know to be true? Fuck no, because that's dangerous. But I do consider it a possibility. I myself, you know what I mean? I don't like to share my political views or anything. I, I really f am of the opinion like, fuck all politicians. That's my political view. Fuck them all. They're all liars and no one's real. It's all just a that's how I feel. But at the end of the day, I do believe in global warming, which is something Hawkeye no believes in. And I know there's people in my chat who don't believe in it. If you don't believe in it, am I not going to fuck with you? Man. No, that's yeah. fucking stupid. I don't care. If we don't believe in the same thing, whatever. Like, like we could still see eye to eye on something else. The Lakers are good. Actually, we suck. We're two and nine. Yeah, y'all. Like I was going to say. The <laughs> Lakers are fucking sure. But as a franchise, we got 17 ships. But I mean, so I'll take two and nine. You know what I mean? 17 ships. How many did the Warriors, your boy Clay, with four, four, five? I'm, but four, what I'm four. saying is, hey, that's, that, that's not fair. Like, you have to, the, the Lakers franchise has some of the best players in the game, though, to pick up a basketball. So, Which LeBron's supposed to be one of the best, and they slacking. I don't know. Well, LeBron, LeBron's damn near 40. And let me tell you this I'm a Kobe fan. I've never been a LeBron fan. Hold on, let me fix this shit. I can't look at it like that. My teams are slacking. What's good? Nineteen. Sick. I don't know why people thought that because y'all got Russell Wilson, y'all was gonna be good. He so, is the problem. So, like I said, I'm a Kobe fan, but LeBron is the best player ever at his age right now. There's never. I think is he 38. There's never been a 38 year old that's as good as LeBron right now. Uh, but I'm saying period. There, what, uh, there the best player ever to me is Jordan. Thank you. 
That's my good. favorite player is Kobe. That's good. You so know, I'll put Kobe I, I too. Like the Kobe Bryant appreciation. That's nice. Yeah, Kobe was my hero growing up. My screen name was Sam Bro Eight. But yeah, the Lakers suck right now. We trash. Yeah. But I'll tell you this: we're the best franchise ever in any sport. Over the fuck the Celtics. Uh, y'all, y'all, <laughs> franchise have the most memorabilia. You know, it's the everybody want to go to the Staples Center. It's like a thing. Like everybody want to see a game like the Staples Center, like Madison Square Garden. Like the Knicks suck, but all their games always sell out. Yeah, when have the Knicks been relevant? And exactly, people want to. And, and and not only do the games sell out, but NBA players go to Madison Square Garden, and they're like, "I want to put up fifty. I yeah. want to put up 40. You know, they want to perform Steph there. Break the three point thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, so Hawkeye, my bad. I could literally talk sports all night, yeah, but I, I need everyone in here who hasn't witnessed you to witness song number one eighty nine. What do you have in store for us, Legend? I got a song that probably nobody ever heard of. It's called. It's wonderful, but uh, talking about teams that suck, how about the Pistons? Because <laughs> <laughs> my boy Hawkeye's in Detroit, Lions, Tigers, and Bears type shit. I mean, Lions, Tigers, and Pistons. That's my team, the Pistons. Well, they, they, they've been sucking for years, but they've been pretty good, you know, about 15 years ago, you know. They just got to Lately, they, 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 they like, Kate Cunningham is raw. Yo, Maybell, look, look, I'm going to do like this. Look, look, let me tell you like this. Look, look, look. I don't kick anyone from my stream. I have no bouncers. I've been getting a few comments from a few different people about Maybell. Maybell, if you get in my box right now and show your face, I'll let you stay in my stream. Other than that, I think I'm going to let you go. Because I've been get, pe for some reason, I haven't really been noticing you, but people have been complaining. If you show your face, you can stay. Okay, hold on. She's real. I don't kick nobody, yo. People can come in here and say that I'm a rapist or some crazy shit. Like, I'll let them stay. My bottle is clean. That shit does. Hey, bitches. <laughs> Did you say, hey, me. bitches? I'm, like, super, like... <laughs> if you said, hey, bitches, you just gained a couple I points. I said, in my... hey, bitches. <laughs> y'all, my bitches. <laughs> y'all, like, we're you all in the say. same place, and we all really actually love each other. So, like, the point that okay. we're always arguing <laughs> is, like... You know when your papers all stick together and they rip I like mean, that? it's that exciting because we, that's what we came here to do is like 